December 30th, 2018. Okay. Le Cate, a small town outside New Orleans. Subtitling the subtitles. Hello, what and all, this is Luckless of Lux. Welcome to the restart of Deadly Premonition 2. Hope you're doing well. How's my hair? I, I don't know what it is. It must be like, cause it's, oh, there's a reflection. I saw a reflection. It must be winter time because like, like my, my fucking forehead is like all dry. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 Right. 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 Oh, thanks, Buttercup. So I played Deadly Premonition a few years ago and I started to, but I never finished it. I played about five, six hours. God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. Dodger, Quiet thank you down. for the 46 cents. You, you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. What did I do to deserve this? Does God hate me? No. The regional bureau chief merely issued a special order. <laughs> oh. The frame rate is so bad. <laughs> How could I forget? A special <laughs> order to rob me of my well-deserved vacation. You want pizza? I'll buy you some pizza. You can find that junk anywhere. Whoa! Hey! Hold on a minute. What did you just say? Pizza is not junk. Pizza is a sacred food. Bestowed upon us by God himself. You need to apologize right now. This is sheer blasphemy. Apologize to who? Pizza or God? Ha <laughs> ha. You think you're so clever. Would DP Maybe without all the drop rates? Pizza this morning like a decent person. It's on switch, you yeah. Cut your finger. I only cut my finger because I couldn't find a left-handed can opener at the hotel. Normally I would never make such an amateur mistake. Oh, really? Well, if you want me to get into gear, then just feed me some pizza, okay? We must act unfaithfully and abandon our ideals again and again. We cannot advance from one period of life into another without causing these pains of treachery. <laughs> <sighs> Nietzsche, again, please spare me. Before my we need to feed him pizza. To bleed. Ever since the moment you got here, it's been nothing but Nietzsche quotes. The worst enemy you can meet will always be yourself. I said knock it off. I prefer pizza to philosophy. Want me to dial the number for you? Come on, Agent Jones. It's time to get serious. Your four and a half years of hard work are finally about to pay off, and all you're focused on is this nonsense? <sighs> pizza isn't nonsense. Quiet. As you wish, Mother. My lips are sealed. Happy now. Mother? What the fuck is going on? Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. The moment you let your guard down, he'll strike. I really don't remember this very well at all. No red, remember? It's open. Come on in. You remember this better than you thought it you would. <laughs> oh, man. So they patched the game since I since I first played it. Um, there was some like content that 
they changed, but also the frame rate's supposed to be better. <laughs> I don't think it is. It's probably like 20 FPS instead of 10. had a rough life I remember this beginning part just went on and on and on you have questions for us that's why you're here isn't it Francis Zach Morgan Leslie, did you did you uh, not see uh, what I what I played this before? I can only move forward. Did if, Buttercup? Have you seen Deadly Premonition One? If you haven't, you gotta watch that because this is just gonna be like this is gonna be like I don't know pizza. Be the first game. No, I'm not going to speed run it. I'm going to take my time. Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please keep that in mind as you speak. Do we have permission to film this? Alia Davis. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> <laughs> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis. And this is Simon Jones. I think the question is, is there anything right? An analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. Simon Jones. Seriously. A southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch a break. Quite the uncanny Leslie, duo. did you see Deadly Premonition 1? You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years Dark has laughter. it been since someone came to chat with us? Oh, but... Look at that! Don't ask me about my fairy. The pot in the back is just floating there. Matter. Hey, Sonny. It's oh, yeah, Rat Man. He's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. Oh, right. If he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. Don't I have, like, some kind of power? And then there's those, like, triangles? Which I thought were, like... Like, slices of pizza? Oh, you should watch the first one. It is a wild. Doritos. <laughs> is that what we were calling them? I thought they were pizza slices. Is there a point in watching this if I haven't seen the first? I mean, yeah... You could still watch it. It's just... The first one's a hell of a ride. <laughs> Up to you guys. You solved many difficult cases across your career. Utilizing your own unique M.O. <laughs> All right, Buttercup. Up to you. You've expertly You're going to be confused regardless. <laughs> thought to be unsolvable. According to our records, after joining the FBI in 2002, 
you quickly solve two drug ring-related kidnapping cases. In 2003, you solved the inside-out Flesh Skinner case in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. In 2004, the Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe case in Milwaukee. And also the stuffed human collector case in St. Louis that very same year. <laughs> then, in 2005, you coincidentally happened to solve the Lise Clarkson murder case while on vacation. You went on to solve many other cases after that, all of them seemingly inexplicable. Did you really solve these cases all on your own? There are no records of you using a wide-scale investigative team or working with anyone else. How did you ever accomplish such monumental feats all by yourself? Uh, it's Francis Zach Gork Morgan. What do you mean? It was all thanks to our talented partner. Hey, Mal. Partner. The FBI files show no record of you ever working with a partner. Do you mean you worked with some sort of unofficial partner or an outside confidant? There's another triangle above her head there on the table. Our partner is our partner. We've always worked together. Besides, Bell, you're forgetting one important thing. After the St. Louis case, we stopped by a diner on our way home and caught Thelma and Louise, two highly sought-after fugitives. <laughs> Use vision to acquire important uh, hints. Help you proceed through the game. Okay. Depletes our concentration. Right. Mechanics. How do I? Do I not select them in that mode? Oh, I see. It, it exposes the uh, look. The smell. Exposes the hints. Oh yeah, he's strange. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me at this point, but. It'll be problematic in court if they decide his testimony is unreliable. He seems completely I reliable. I to talk to him face to face like this. I need to get him to stop smoking that for a bit. Francis I gotta keep looking Zach at the buttons. Morgan. He was once an FBI special agent, an extremely talented one. At least that's what they tell me. Perhaps he was a little too talented. Excuse me, Mr. Morgan, but would you please refrain from consuming that while we speak? I'm talking about... Yes, that. You don't need to worry about us. Don't get in our way and we won't get in yours. Unfortunately, questioning doesn't work like that. Our data needs to be consistent. That's some serious posture. Now, please put out that stinking indulgence hey, right this minute. Zombie? No. It to looks totally healthy. What <sighs> if we say no? Then I'll put it out myself. Using force. Whoa, whoa, Aaliyah. This is Morgan's house. Besides, oh, yeah. it's legal in Massachusetts <laughs> for individuals to consume cannabis in the comfort of their own homes. I forgot about the fucking milk that was duct taped together in a box. Why is that there? I don't think they ever explained that. <laughs> And I mean, come on. It's medicinal. Exactly. Mm. 
Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? What are you- The thick oh. black accessory wrapped around your neck. That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. <laughs> or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. We admire your bravery. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought you retired from profiling. <laughs> Bullseye, huh? You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. Kawaii, do you know Deadly Premonition? These games are fucking weird. <laughs> for someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? Okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Agent Jones. That's sexual harassment. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're watching it again. Yeah. So, Belle, does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals? <laughs> Dark laughter. He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. Zach's vacant eyes? Stage four progressive malignant tumor. How do humans behave when they know death is just around the corner? Ratman! And what if that human is also a high functioning sociopath? The dialogue was written by a seventh grader. No, it's written by 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 Sweary. Actually, I don't know who wrote the dialogue. It's written by someone that knows what they're doing, I'd say. It's like It's just like ridiculous. <laughs> An ornate antique chessboard. Looks like he stopped halfway through the game. But who was playing with him? Wait, I can look and I can inspect. What's the difference? Mr. Morgan, may I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? Okay, so we actually question about it. If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know. And I'll retract it. Bell, what's wrong? You sure put a lot of effort into that approach. It's a question about death. About this body? Are you afraid of what's coming? Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask us again. Honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. <laughs> intriguing. Yes. <laughs> Belle, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? It's such an, this is such like an indulgent game. No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. <laughs> Colder than you could imagine. Now the pot's not floating. The cold that no photograph could ever express. The sun. 
powerless. And the temperature drops below zero. Right in the middle of the day. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning. You can't really understand something until you experience it for yourself. If you want to learn more about us, you need to gain more experience. Bell. I like to say Bell. Um. That chessboard looks rather old. I think I patched it, yeah. And you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore. Right. They were banned by the Sites Treaty. That was made in France in the 1900s. We know it's in bad taste. But the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. I, I presume that if they, uh, when I opened the game, it would, it would prompt me to, to patch it. Furry and Kenji Goda wrote the game. They were the first kick it. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No. But it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games. Or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? Isn't it obvious that... I may not look it, but I'm actually we? a bit of a chess nut myself. When I was in school, I used to pour over every issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. Well, unfortunately, your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. And I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. De Hello! <laughs> It's a lot. Hello. He was simply playing chess all alone. Maybe that's one of his passwords. So, what's wrong with that, Bell? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Oh no. Everything was done in a perfectly legal manner. We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. Ooh, now she's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. Oh yeah, I remember this game is, uh, was definitely very much inspired by, um, the first season of True Detective. Kind of like the first game was inspired by, uh, Twin Peaks, right? These files are from the case that took place just outside of New Orleans in 2005. The agent who handled the case was Francis Zach Morgan. And now he's sitting right in front of me. Do you Speed remember the right homicides in. that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend hey, the perpetrator. I see you! How's the volume, by the way, guys? Is it, is it pretty well balanced so far? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> we stole the right to investigate from them. Just as you said. Considering what the first game was like, 
I almost wouldn't be surprised the entire game was just this conversation. <laughs> it's okay, Loop Loop. Okay, good. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? Because it's not going to be. We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Wait till I get to the skateboarding. <laughs> Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Belle. Either way, that case is closed. Closed? You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Belle. They found Lise Clarkson's body. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Service's cold storage warehouse. After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first oh, okay, victim. okay, okay. So they discover it later. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved, Lise Clarkson. And this is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? I have a feeling he's going to have a, a very dead gaze in his eyes. Can't seem to keep himself away from dead girls. Investigation mode. Nothing. The body that went missing for 14 years was suddenly discovered frozen in a warehouse. This is some kind of message from the victim to us. Message from the victim to us? How? What? How could the vic- What? How could the victim <laughs> provide that message? Okay. We're pleased that her body turned up. She She's froze herself? She's cut up into pieces. <laughs> You're gonna play Dead by Daylight and De watch Deadly Permanent at the same time? Double dead. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Lisa's body can't change anything now. The message on the frozen block was boil for 30 minutes, stir, then simmer for 20. Richie, you sick fuck! And it certainly has nothing to do with us. If the FBI is watching, be sure to put Richie Mundo on a list. The list? I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. See? She's sliced up? How could she? <laughs> She's just like, oh, well, I'm sliced up. I might as well make my way to this. Freezing. Freezing. <laughs> Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, she's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. Well, I mean, stranger things have happened in this game. Or in this, in this series. Even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. She looks more like a piece of art or a mythological figure from a painting. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> a corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Sounds just like our story. Hmm. Yes. Yes. That went okay. <laughs> now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. That went okay! <laughs> I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. That went okay.
Who is it? This my fairy character you keep speaking to. Hey, Mark. This is Deadly Premonition 2. You can't see her. Such bad manners. Why does Francis talk as we? Well, Francis has like a friend called Zach. Great. Like it. Not really clear if it's like a multiple personality or like it part of a imaginary friend. I don't, I don't know. Just keeps talking. He will talk to he'll, Francis. Will talk to Zach as well. Uh, or during the uh, during the. Or this is just an intro. There's like a main game as well. You barge into our apartment. You'll see. Yet you don't even care about who else is living here. Dissociative identity disorder. In the past, it was known as multiple personality disorder. You were subjected to an internal probe only once during your career, correct? They suspected that you had DID, but you denied it. And no problems arose during your test. Is this how you dealt with the psychological profiler back then, too? Saying strange things, weaving unrelated matters together. Is that how you slipped through? You're free to draw your own conclusions, Belle. But my fairy clearly exists. She's been sitting right there on your lap this entire time. <laughs> hey, stop it. No violence allowed in here, Belle. Wouldn't want to scare my fairy, now would we? What the fuck? <laughs> Did it attack? Did the fairy attack her? You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. Everything happens for a reason. Dude on the right there looks a little uncomfortable. The moment Lise Clarkson's body was found, we did the best we could to start our own local investigation. I don't know if he saw the comic guys with he and himself. I don't quite see the issue on paper. I see it, but still, <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, if, it, if that's what he has to do to solve the crimes, does it matter? As long as he's not hurting anybody. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We question all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staff the warehouse and its owner, but we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Hmm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? Okay, he keeps looking up, but the fairy's supposed to be on her lap. <laughs> that warehouse, that man, so incoherent, such a pain. Hey, are you talking about the guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a pain to deal with, too. Awkward. A large man, yes? Could have moved. Hmm. No need to answer. If you don't want to. Awkward silence! I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. Isn't there someone else you should have talked to before coming to 
us, such as... We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. <gasps> we assumed you met with her during your time there. We haven't been to Louisiana. Not in 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. No oh, music! That man is our witness. Aren't you, Simon? <laughs> He's right. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve. Which means that I didn't get to either. Aw, poor Simon. Are you positive about that? I'm so curious to go back and like watch when I played through this section before to see if my comments are exactly the same or not. <laughs> hey, Blanca. I took the liberty of checking some airline records. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. I'm not watching. I'm, I'm replaying it, Blanco. What are you talking about? You know I don't watch my own stuff. It's terrible. It's awful. <laughs> this is the fake name you used to use as an Just agent, kidding. isn't it? <laughs> A mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries, and they always have the most bizarre timing. <laughs> Incidentally, music's back. On the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton, Trenton, New Jersey. You can find that type of car anywhere. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> Dark laughter. That's dark laughter, everybody. Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it. Especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. They're practically begging me to question them. <laughs> A stinking indulgence and a massive DVD collection. He's got every volume of police dogs. You must live a very comfortable life. We're retired, remember? Retired in your 40s. I'm envious. Who doesn't love movies, Belle? You should apologize, Blacko. How dare you eat pizza? And tempt us. That craving. I'm not a fan. Oh, that won't do. You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Films guide us. Films are filled with every important life lesson there is how much of the first game is a need to know i mean you don't need to know anything for the first game to enjoy this probably i want i i'm, I'm curious to know what you think <laughs> watching the second game without watching the first one but, um it's all craziness anyways so it doesn't matter but it, it would Add some context. A lot of context. Is that so? For example, CML. They Live, 1988, directed by John Carpenter. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. You know, 
You got a point. Movies teach us about everything we need to know. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. It's one of Stallone's best films. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption, but that film changed my life. Simon, that has nothing to do with the film. <laughs> You're just talking about pizza. <laughs> what? Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you think that? There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. Wait, did she even and see that? Do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? You didn't use much salt, did you? What are you implying? <laughs> You just told me that you find impending death to be intriguing. That confused me. When I look around your room, uh. all I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Polyemva treatment, polyconcentrated <laughs> vitamin C IVs. <laughs> it's not even hiding it at all. It's just, it's just there's just twenty bags in there. <laughs> Fresh vegetable juice. Vegetable protein without salt. Oh, man. Gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. They, so basically, and I bet you I said this before, he like, he bought a bunch of milk and he just like, he taped them all together and he would go like this. He would, <laughs> he would drink it and like twist it around. The ambivalence, yes. What? Two contradictory emotions, mixing, coexisting together. An adult, mature mind is never satisfied with only one response. Not if you drink it all at once, Leslie. We should all drink milk in a square configuration. It seems to be working out for Francis, Zach Morgan. It's common sense. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> this room's a total mess. But certain spots look perfectly clean. Is it just a coincidence? Mm. No. There are no coincidences with this man. Mr. Morgan. I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are sanctuaries. It was like related to the fairy, right? <laughs> They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries. That's right. Sacred places. Hovels for pure souls, if you oh, okay. will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The soul's still there. We haven't touched a thing. But we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon. Don't touch the sanctuary. Uh, s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. <laughs> Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Doesn't have a lot of respect for Simon, eh? Uh, my bad. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> You're earning far more than you deserve, then. What were you doing all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time. And what does he have to show for it? Crossword puzzles? No way. Come on. I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. I was going to say Sudoku. 
Su... It's pronounced Sudoku, but I would pronounce that Sudoku. Sudoku. Agent Jones. Oh, she could see the, the kitchen. It's it's back there. Okay. Oh, right. We just couldn't see it when we entered. He's completely taken control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Rummaging Simon. Agent Jones. Pseudo. Cool. The briefcase isn't even that big. How long does he intend to keep that up? What's that in the the um, jar? Does he have pizza menus stuffed inside there or something? Agent Jones, did you find the files? Francis is a jerk. Uh, he's cocky, I would say. He's very confident. Does that make him a jerk? I don't know. Is Do you think he's a jerk? Greenvale case files. Residing agent Francis Zach Morgan. Mr. Morgan, do you recognize these files? Whoa! Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. Ow! Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction of you. justice. We told you. Go. Ah. Say back. Say back. Sanctuary. Down. Say back. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. I can't remember that at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were so sick with the 35 months. Mr. Morgan? How you doing? Uh. Sanctuary. I cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Everything should be fine. Oh, now. the red, the red. Remember, remember, you can't deal with red. That's what she is worried about. Uh... I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Such an unusual thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. I, I'm sorry too, Morgan. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. And. No more red, either. <laughs> Don't ever touch one again. I told them not to. Why would they do that? Make them go away. Sanctuaries. Don't touch. Stay away. Now, may we return to our discussion? Well, that's a good way to push him, right? Throw him off? Don't worry. I won't let them touch you again. I'll keep... Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red. And I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. Hey, Alpha. This is a very Hacking, large Hacking, good to see you. Is there something you don't want people finding out about? It's got a red button! Hmm. Good question. But we never know when some curious civil servants may come and sift through our trash now, do we? You're already retired. What are you so worried about? <laughs> It's just a simple habit. Isn't this chair kind of red, too? 
from back when we were still on I duty. A, I guess it's more of a brown. Didn't they bang that into your head when you were up in Quantico? Some habits are hard to break. No matter how hard you try. Could you tell me what exactly the word sanctuary means to you? Sanctuaries are sanctuaries. What does sanctuary mean to you guys? I would say a safe place. Or a respite. Safe haven. Let's see what Francis Zach Morgan thinks. Nothing more and nothing less. <laughs> that doesn't explain anything. <laughs> okay. He's apparently he's just going to use the word in the definition. <laughs> Welcome back, Finder. Why do you wish to know? Just curious. Bell. You're a much ruder person than you initially seem to be. Don't you agree, my fairy? Hey, Peregrine. What do our sanctuaries have to do with the investigation? If you're out of questions, then how about just going home? Hey, mind if I jump in here? What is it, Simon? We hope you've got a real question for us. Well, actually, I'm also a little curious myself. No one's supposed to touch any sanctuary, right? That's what we said. What about you, though? You can't even touch them yourself? Are there any extenuating circumstances? What are you getting at? In the dictionary under redundant, it says see redundant. Oh, a Robin Williams joke. I mean, I doubt if any of this really matters, but if no one can touch the sanctuaries, then how do you clean them? Da, da, da. <laughs> There's just no answer. <laughs> hey, Miracle. <laughs> Enjoy the work. Oh, Mr. Morgan, I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. Okay, so this is the first, the case from the first game, I believe, right? We don't want to remember that town. I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over. Oh yeah, place. Anna Graham. <laughs> I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. What a fucking crazy experience that was. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. Were you traumatized? Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. Perhaps you simply finished making preparations. That's what automated robo vacuums were built for. Good point, Lydra. Don't have to touch the sanctuary if robot vacuums doing that. What are you Oomba. at? Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Luke Carre case? Read the report. We have nothing else to say. One thing I will say about this one over the first one, as far as I can remember, is like... It's actually... Yes, the dialogue is ridiculous, but like it's actually pretty well written <laughs> and like the music makes sense for what we're experiencing. <laughs> it's, like, 
in the first one, at this point, they already would have played that like da -da 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 theme a few times, <laughs> which is just it's just totally out of place in the scenario. I just need one more push, one more thing that can summon up the past. Oh right, okay now honeycomb in a jar. Picture in the documents. I want to ask about that. I don't remember what that was all about. That's royal jelly. Huh? You were staring at the jar, weren't you? Do you find it strange that there's honeycomb inside? We wanted to harvest royal jelly in its most natural state. The queen's main food source created from the worker bees' secretions. It's a perfect food, filled with power, meant to fuel the birth of the next queen. By absorbing it into our own bodies, we too can acquire that power. You want to give birth to the next queen? Incidentally, did you know that all the worker bees are female? There's people who will just eat honeycomb. Oh, I've never tried it. Interesting. No. Guess they didn't teach you that at Quantico. Male bees are only born to inseminate, and they're born from unfertilized eggs to boot. They have short lives and don't even get stingers. Sort of feels like a glimpse into the future of our society, wouldn't you agree? Women are gifted with the power to conceive, give birth, and nourish their children. It's all at the grocery store here. Mm. But men, men are consumed with the job of providing women with the chance to do so. If women no longer had to rely on men for the seeds of life, they would soon cease to desire them, we believe. Be careful, Simon. <laughs> huh? Of what? Your bell's already stolen the reins from you. <laughs> Fucking weird. The silver clock in that trash pile. Is that an H5? That's right. John Harrison's fifth chronometer. Completed in 1770. After many years, he completed it. And presented it to the Board of Longitude in order to end their feud with him. Be interesting to try once. I don't think I would want uh, more than a bite. Too sweet. Yeah, I have no idea. That's only a replica, of course. You like clocks? Clocks are amazing. Prime fruit of the human race's intellect. We took the invisible idea of time and manifested it in these. Yeah, I love clocks, too. Absolutely fascinating. I disagree. Oh? Why? Time is valuable precisely because it can't be seen. Yet nowadays, people can't tell what time it is unless it's measured in numbers. Talk about idiocy. Oh, now you've tried it? Honeycomb is nice. I don't mean to side with the Board of Longitude, but remember, humans used to cross oceans with the stars alone. We have our eyes to read moon charts and study the sky. We don't need clocks. Well, they also used to fucking get lost in shit. <laughs> what if it's cloudy or storming? All you need is courage and a love for adventure. <laughs> Hear that, my fairy? Courage and a love for adventure? <laughs> Come on, Belle. I'll keep my eyes open too, Nellum. I, I actually never noticed that in the grocery stores. Surely you know how many lives have been claimed by your pal's courage and adventure. <sighs> hey, hold on a second here. This has been going on for an hour now. <laughs> that sort of longitude thing. What the heck is that? I mean, I've heard of it before. I'm an FBI analyst, remember? I just sort of can't remember it right now. I know what it is, really. 
I'm telling the truth. Come on, Aaliyah, back me up here. Aaliyah? It's in slash near the deli area in small containers. Okay. I probably just never noticed it. Mr. Morgan, please look at this. New music hype. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. Look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zach Morgan. Oh, hey, Izzy. Welcome. It's more available during the summer. Fucking tree. Like it's pulsing. The light. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red. Red tree. Red tree. Yes. A red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. The Greenvale case and the Lease Clarkson murder case. They're connected by these red trees, aren't they? I guess technically this is a prequel. Right? Because the Le Carre case. Both places growing. It was before the Greenvale case. Seeds. Trees. Answer me. What are these trees? Red trees. Figured it out. Yes. Smarter than we thought. Connection. Red trees. I want the truth. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Well done, Belle. You're good. Damn good. Oh, is that there? There was like a demon. Right? <laughs> Did the demon possess him? Mm. Are you ready to talk now? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. Hey, David. Well, this is the sequel to Fine. the first one. We'll tell you. But even if you watched that, you wouldn't know what you were watching. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes. It was that red tree. That red tree ruined my life. It was... It was a sultry summer day. Here we go, everybody. Sun comes down hard on you in the south. Like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers. It all started back in that sweltering summer. We still had our best friend with us back then. The other me. <laughs> My better half. I forgot there was a fucking intro. Never a choice. <laughs> when somebody needs you, you can't turn away. You're their only lifeline. Just a hero, a bullet for hire, working alone. I don't know what the fuck Always the fairy is the media. A cry in the darkness. They probably won't actually explain it. That's been long forgotten, but it haunts me. My destiny to be alone. Time when you see 
It's actually the way they made it look like it does look like True Detective, the intro. If you guys haven't seen, if you haven't seen True Detective, you gotta watch the first season at least. The first and the third are really good. I never got through the second one. See a blackout. Beautiful. Beautiful.